happy May. It's the first of May today. Do we have some people coming on? Hopefully, we'll get. Uh, we'll wait a second so everyone can join us. Uh, if you have been joining us, you know that we go live every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, uh, and we share a learning safari with you. But today is kind of a special learning safari because we're going to talk about an animal. First, we have a few live animals in the studio, um, but we're going to talk about an animal that we don't actually have here at, at Pacific Animal Productions. So, not only is it the first day of May, but it's also Save the Rhinos Day, uh, which is, I believe, a world known holiday, animal holiday. Um, so, today we're going to be learning all about rhinos and the stuff that their horn is made out of. You might notice that the theme of the day is keratin. Um, so hopefully, if you guys have been watching our learning safaris, you have definitely heard the word keratin before because we kind of say it a lot. Keratin makes up a lot of the stuff that many animals have. But before we dive into all of that fun stuff, um, first, of course, you guys, we want to plug some of our stuff that we have going on here at PAP. Um, so we are now doing virtual learning safaris. So if you want to learn about maybe some more animals or you want to customize a program, uh, head over to our website. We have all of our information on virtual learning safaris. We've done quite a few of them uh, and we've been pretty good at it. So check that out. Also, you might notice we're in a different studio. We've upgraded. Uh, we're going full professional over here. Um, also, something that's really, really fun, if you are so bored at home and you're looking for something exciting to do, um, maybe a way to celebrate Cinco de Mayo coming up, we actually have a paint night with Paco, our sloth. Um, so if you've ever gone to like a sip and paint, it's kind of like that. We're going to have an instructor guiding you through a painting process of painting a sloth. And we have a live model, Paco, is going to be literally hanging out, eating some snacks um, while you guys paint him. It's really, really fun. We did a test drive. I am not a good artist and I was even able to do it. So highly recommend. Again, those tickets can be found on our website, PacificAnimalProductions.com. Okay, guys. So... Like we said, today we're talking about keratin. So before we do anything, what I want you guys to do is look at your fingernails or maybe look at the hair on your arm. Your hair, your fingernails are made out of a protein called keratin. We have it right here. So keratins are a family of fibrous proteins. So there are two different types of keratins, alpha and beta. Things like your hair, your fingernails, um, hooves, those are going to be alpha um, keratins. Things like a bird feather, like our little friend Lenny over here, his feathers and maybe even his beak, those are made out of beta keratins, but they're all keratins. Now, like we said, today is Save the Rhinos Day. Lenny is asking for a head scratch. That's what's happening over here. He's like, hello, I need a nice little massage. Now, before we get to Lenny, even though he's going to want to be the star of the show, and I'm sure he's going to let us know that by being very loud soon. Um, but we are talking about rhinos today. Save the rhinos day. So we have some really exciting stuff. First, we have this. So uh, rhinos obviously uh, come from two different places. So there are five different species of rhino and two of them come from Africa and three of them come from Asia. So we have this really awesome um, little chart, and the reason that we need a Save the Rhinos Day is because, believe it or not, there actually used to be a little less than 100 species of rhino extant on the earth. Extant is another really fancy word, and that means um, that they're living currently on the planet. So now, instead of a little, little less than 100, we only have five species that are extant on the earth. So we have the uh, white rhino, the white rhino is near threatened. And really what we're talking about with the white rhino is southern white rhinos. Northern white rhinos are actually like beyond critically endangered. They're definitely extinct in the wild. Actually, northern white rhinos, there's actually only two of them left. They are um, down in Kenya. They're both female, unfortunately, so they won't be breeding. Um, and they are heavily guarded um, 24 hours a day uh, down there on a nature preserve in Kenya. So only two northern white rhinos left, um, but southern white rhinos near threatened. The greater one-horned rhino, also known as the Indian rhino, is vulnerable. And then we're going to go to critically endangered. So the Javan, Sumatran, and black rhino 
all critically endangered. The job in Serrano, it has 72, I have my little numbers on the back, 72 um, species currently in the wild. Sumatran is less than 100. Um, and actually, since we don't want to be, you know, such a downer with all these facts, there is some good news, friends. The black rhino, um, he, they, or they used to have about uh, 2,500 species. That was about 20 years ago. Actually, their number, numbers have doubled. So it's not all bad. We are making um, great strides in uh, rhino conservation. So there is light at the end of the tunnel, and that's why we're talking about it today, you guys, because knowledge is power. Um, if we all know about the rhino, we'll want to save them, we think. So let's dive into keratin. Why are we talking about keratin today? Well, friends, that rhino horn, when we think of a rhino, we think of this big, bulky animal with one or two horns on their head. Some people think that those horns are have medicinal purposes or can be used to treat medical things, and for that reason, uh, the rhino could be poached for their horn. That is their main threat, that and habitat loss out in um, their natural habitat of Africa and Asia. So, we are here to tell you that actually that horn isn't really going to do all that much medically for sure. Because like we said, it's made out of the same stuff that our fingernails and our hair is made out of. It's made out of uh, keratin. Again, found all over the animal kingdom, not really going to help if someone gets sick. Again, knowledge is power and that's why we are talking about it. So that big rhino horn, just the same stuff as your hair. Now, like we said, we do have some other animals to eat today. Not a rhino, I wish. I had a big rhino coming into the studio. That would be fun for you guys and for me. It'd be kind of crazy for me, actually. Um, but we do have some animals that have keratin because, again, it can be found on pretty much any animal. Also, guys, if you have any comments or questions, go ahead and ask us. Meredith, do we have any questions yet? Yes, Robinson Kindergarten is curious. Are humans their only predators? To Ooh, that's the rhinos. A good question. Pretty much, actually. Rhinos are really, really big. They weigh a lot. And even though they're herbivores and kind of going to just be munching on leaves and grasses um, and other veggies, um, they're a little too big for other things to take them down. Maybe something like a lion or a tiger in Africa or Asia um, could take them down, especially if they were maybe working together. But for the most part, humans are definitely their number one predator, unfortunately. Which again, is why we think it's so important to be sharing this knowledge with you guys. Yeah. Yep. And we have another question. Lorelei wants to know, what do rhinos eat? Ooh, great question, Lorelei. They are herbivores, like we said. So it's all plants, lots of grasses, um, veggies. Some rhinos will actually, usually that horn is used for protecting themselves or maybe fighting if they have to, but some rhinos will actually use their, oh, I know. Some rhinos will actually use their horn to turn over um, uh, logs and things so that they can find roots and things to eat like that. So some will even use them to find their roots. Great questions, guys. Keep in asking us your questions. Meredith is gonna let me know if we have any along the way. But first, we need to meet our first friend. Like I said, we are going to talk about our very handsome Lenny. We're going to talk about him last. Instead, first, we're going to talk about an animal that has kind of a similar look to him, even though he's a lot smaller. His name is Amador. And Amador is a screaming, hairy armadillo. Look at his little like yoga pose, he is so cute. So the reason I think he looks a little bit like a rhino is because of that shell. His armor, remember armadillo is made, or um, actually means little armored one. So this is all of his armor, and he's got these hairs too, and that's made out of keratin, just like a rhino's horn. And I kind of just kind of think these like bony plates look a little bit like a rhino's um, plates as well. So he's a screaming hairy armadillo, which I think is like the coolest name for an armadillo. But luckily for us, we don't hear him screaming right now. Usually when you think of an armadillo and you think of them like rolling into a ball, going down uh, and kind of um, tucking all of their arms and legs in for safety. But Amador here actually can't roll into a ball. This little yoga pose is as much into a ball as he can roll. The only type of armadillo that can roll all the way into a ball is the three-banded armadillo. You guessed it, you guys. They have three of these little bands. That's a three-banded armadillo. But this is it for Amador. This is as much as he can roll into a ball. So instead, when he feels scared or threatened out in uh, his natural habitat, he's going to um, scream at the top of his lungs, and then he will use his long claws to bury underground. Look, Lenny is like, what is that thing? 
Now, speaking of claws, those are made out of keratin too. Look at those long claws. Also keratin, you guys. He's gonna use those to dig underground in order to find safety. And he, of course, is a hairy armadillo because he's hairy. Oh, oh wow. Thank you, Lenny. Yeah. Very exciting. Now, uh, Amador comes from South America. <coughs> South America. Before we went on this live program, I said I was like, Lenny has been letting me out here the whole time. But he comes from South America, and we do have armadillos from right here in the United States. So um, you might have heard of the nine-banded armadillo before. That's going to be the one we have right here in the U.S. Okay, guys, we don't want to keep him waiting any longer. He's ready for his attention. So let's head on over here to uh, Lenny. Do you want a little treat today? Oh, yeah, that's exciting. So Lenny is a Moluccan cockatoo, also known as a salmon-crested cockatoo. They come from Indonesia. Um, and so he is um, an Asian type of cockatoo, whereas some will also come from Australia. If you guys have tuned into um, some previous learning safaris, uh, I believe it was our wildlife trivia learning safari, we met Angel. She was a sulfur crested cockatoo and she came from Australia. Now, oh, thank you, he's flinging things everywhere. Now Lenny, like we said, is a Moluccan cockatoo and he's about 47 years old. In human care, you guys know, again, if you've been watching us, parrots live a long time. So he's gonna live to be about, probably about 70 to 80. Um, and he's showing off those zygodactyl feet. Again, we've definitely learned about them. They have two toes in the front and two toes in the back to hold on to, ooh, some delicious apple. Now friends, remember we are talking about keratin. So just like a rhinoceros's horn, his nails, his beak, and his feathers are all keratin. The difference is gonna be his feathers and his beak are made out of beta keratin, whereas a rhino horn is gonna be made out of alpha keratin. Now what does that mean? That just means basically that it's a little bit of a different type of keratin, but it's all in the same family. Oh yeah, Lenny, is that good? You guys can also see him moving his tongue. He'll use that tongue to move food around. He's actually kind of got a bone in there that'll uh, help him to move that crazy tongue around. Looks a lot different than, than our tongue. Now that beak is so strong, you guys. He can bite down with a force of about 500 pounds. Um, so that is an impressive beak. He could break a broomstick in half without even thinking twice about it. Meredith, do we have any questions coming in now? Yes, Griffin and Maverick want to know if Lenny can talk. Ooh, great question, guys. So uh, he cannot talk. Other cockatoos can. They definitely have the ability to mimic sounds that they hear. Lenny has chosen to focus more on screaming really loud and whistling. Let's see if we can get him to do it. Oh, I can't even whistle. Ready? Whoop, whoop. Can you do it? Can you do it, Meredith? <laughs> He's like, no, not, not that there's a camera on. I do it all the time, but now that there's a camera on me, I'm totally not going to do it. That's okay, Lenny. So he can whistle. He can scream really loud. You guys hear, heard how um, loud he can be. These are a super loud bird. People sometimes think that they'll make a great pet, but I don't know about you guys. I love working with Lenny, but if I had to have that screaming in my house, oh my goodness, that... You don't really get a whole lot of sleep with a loud bird like this. But can he dance? Oh, he can he a dance. Comments. Lenny is a dancer, and you know what, you guys? I'm actually pretty surprised that he is not dancing right now because usually everything is so exciting that he'll dance all around. If you've ever seen him at a fair or a festival, we know a lot of you guys watching have seen us out and about before. Um, Lenny is always there showing off his dance moves. And the reason that they're gonna be screaming like he was doing earlier, I call it screaming, but it's really vocalizing. Um, and the reason that he would maybe be dancing is because he is excited. So it's not because he's not screaming because he's angry or anything, it's actually because he's like, yeah, this is awesome. These are a really, really smart animal, smart bird. And so he gets excited by a lot of stuff. So um, a lot of mentally stimulating stuff, like um, lots of noises, new people, anything that could be exciting is gonna be really fun for little Lenny here. Now we do have some other things to talk about because remember, it is Save the Rhino Day. We kind of packed a lot into this uh, little learning safari, but I'm gonna move on over here and show you guys. We have 
some cool artifacts today too. So, remember, keratin can be found all over the animal kingdom. Another example of beta keratin is are these. These are um, African crested porcupine quills. Porcupine quills are a beta keratin um, and they're like modified hairs. They're hollow inside. They're pretty sharp, you can see. Um, and uh, another example of keratin. If you wanted to see where these came from, head on back a few posts ago. We met our African crested porcupine quillo on one of our learning safaris. Okay, and then this is the coolest one of all, I think. We have this really awesome artifact. So, oh, I should have done it in the beginning. If you have a guess or you know what this is, comment below. Oh, wait. Oh, my gosh. It tells you right on the front. That's okay. I'm going to tell you anyway. I would be impressed if anyone knew because I saw this and I didn't even know what it was at first. This is a baleen from a whale. So, whales are, and this is specifically from a bowhead whale. Um, and so, whales are filter feeders, right? So, on the roof of their mouth, they have all of these bristles or baleens, and this is all keratin too. Kind of cool, you can see right there, it's so thick um, and it's hard, it feels like, I don't even know, like a plate, a dinner plate. Um, so it's really, really hard, but same thing. Your fingernails, your hairs, baleen, feathers, a bird's beak, a rhino's horn, it's all made out of keratin, this little family of proteins that can make up pretty much anything. So the reason that we're talking about keratin, you guys, remember, is because um, uh, rhinos can be poached. That's their main threat, poaching for their horns. But really, those horns aren't anything special. I mean, they are for a rhino, but for a human, not going to be too special for us. We have the same stuff right on our own body. As always, friends, we do have um, activities. And we have first learning about keratin. So you guys can fill this out. You actually don't even have to print this out. You can just talk about it with your family or um, your friends and kind of just brainstorm what maybe where these animals come from, what they are, and where on their body we would find keratin. Let's see, Lenny, can you hold this for me? Thank you. Okay, and then we also have our color and learn. He's hired. He's good. Thank you. You're perfect for that. Uh, and so uh, we also have our color and learn, of course. We've got rhinos, and it has, gives you a little bit of information about rhinos, too. So when I was actually making this activity sheet, I like to think, even though this is a little baby, and the two um, living northern white rhinos are full adults, but I like to think that these are the two northern white rhinos down in Kenya because um, they are so, so special, the two females that are left. Before we end, you guys, that was so fun for me. We talked about, you know, we don't always get to talk about an animal that we don't really have. When he's like, I didn't really like this uh, activity sheet. Actually, he loves it. One of Lenny's favorite things to do is to shred paper. So sometimes as enrichment, we talked about enrichment a little bit last Friday with our fair Fiesta Friday. Um, we talked about things that these animals like to do. Lenny loves making a mess. He is really good at it with that big beak. Before we sign off, you guys, Meredith, do you have any other questions or anything? Alisar was wondering what Lenny's favorite food is. Oh, Alisar, great question, and hello. Thank you for watching again. Look at him going. Uh, his favorite food is definitely any type of seed or nut. He loves cracking open a big walnut. Um, that's going to be one of his favorite things. You can see, he's like, oh, I get to be destructive with my beak, cracking open a walnut. So it's kind of like dinner and fun for him, too. All right, guys, well, I want to thank you all so much for joining us again. Before we sign off, you guys know, go to our website, pacificanimalproductions.com, and uh, definitely check out our Paint with Paco. Again, that's coming up on Cinco de Mayo. If you can't make that one, we have one on the 8th and the 16th as well. So we have many options. It's really, really fun. Um, and, of course, all proceeds go right back to the animals. So thank you guys so much for joining us. Let's keep learning alive. Have a wonderful rest of your day.